Hello and welcome to another uh, review. Uh, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. Um, actually, have let's mute this. Actually, I have the times noted. There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hands that I have in total out of the 23 minutes here. Um, that I want to talk about. Like um, sometimes it's just good. Like it's not always criticizing your play. Uh, like here with the king ten on the left, uh, which we'll open with, and I'll, uh, as usual, uh, give a video or give an ID, uh, give the uh, the link in the video. So we see bet this. Um, I think it's a fine see bet. Uh, you go into like, uh, yeah, we see bet this. Uh, I think this is uh, correct. Like ace jack hits our range way more often, especially the ace, than his range. Uh, it's not that draw heavy, there's not like a flesh draw, uh, 9 10 maybe, but we can definitely wrap the ace. We still have a gut shot to the nuts, so if he has 9 10 and a queen comes, uh, we actually get his stack. Like, I think this is a fine spot to see, but it's a semi bluff, like we have 4 outs, um, but it's a, it's a bluff nonetheless. Uh, but a good spot to see, but just because this hits our range more often than his range. Um, then we jump to 325 apparently, or close to that, where we have ace king. Uh, there's like a bunch of limpers in front of us um, and we have ace king in the big blind there's no way we're checking this down uh, you go to a bad side of 30 which seems correct in my opinion uh, and it falls around so we take down that pot uh, so up until now good play uh, then at 650 or around that um, we have pocket tens on the left and we have 4-5 on the right it, it's actually both hands that uh, I'm gonna talk about um, on the left, what's what's gonna happen is that we get three callers, and the board comes ace high, uh, two over cards, even ace jack, uh, and it's a bit scary. We decide not to to lead into uh, people, especially with two people behind us to act on this kind of board. Like, um, even if we hit one of our tens on the turn, if we get called, like tens of our ten of hearts is still scary. Um, so we have like one direct out that makes us feel good and even then like there are some gut shots that, that get there, uh, you never know. Um, so you check fault is, um, I think this is fine, like there's no reason to see but this, like sure we can rip the A's but then once we get a call we, we usually out of position like a fault there is fine, uh, just throw away the hand. Here um, it checks and it checks, checks back like it's a limp pot, uh, a 6 comes and uh, we obviously have the straights, I think you were a bit too busy with the left to notice that instantly, but then we lead for pot, I think that's a bit too greedy, like what are we wrapping here that we lead for pot, we want to get value out of flesh draws, we want to get value out of um, maybe some kings, um, like just pot seems seems too strong, like go for 8 cents, go for 10 cents, uh, it's all fine. Uh, he's gonna call with a wider range and we want the call, like we have a really strong hand, we want the call. We want to get value like 12, it's just too high, uh, work on that bet size, like it makes no sense to bet uh, exact pot here um, into him. Like we can, like I, I like the bet, I would never check behind here, uh, or I would never check on the turn here as well, but this can look like a bluff, even if we bet 8 cents, there's no reason to bet 12 cents. Um, so that's that one, and then we jump to 8.30 apparently, uh, or about that, uh, the king 9. So we get a call, board comes very coordinated, um, hits his range more often than not, we're gonna get check raised often. Uh, our 9 obviously isn't an out because then there's 4 to straight. Uh, we decide to C bet, which I don't think we should here, we can just give up the hand if the king comes, we can then uh, do something with it, but now it's just a bluff and we get check raised, check mean raised even, and we even have to give this up. like. There's no way we ever continue there. I don't think uh, a C bet on this kind of board, even with aces, like even with aces, this is a scary board to C bet on just because it's so coordinated. Like it's scary. What do you do when you get check raised? Just get to the showdown as cheap as possible. If you if you have like ace ace, just get to the showdown as, as cheap as possible, because uh, it is a scary board, uh, especially from against someone from blinds range. Like this hits his range. Like six seven is gonna do this with eight seven is gonna do this with. Um, 8 6 is definitely in his range, so the 6 5 could be in his range. 4 3 suited is in his range. 9 8 is in his range. Like, there's there's, there's insane amount of hands in his range that, that has us beat here. Like, I don't think C bidding here is fine. Like, I would dare to not C bid it there. Uh, and then, um, like a small note on the right one, 
we flop a double gutter, um, like an 8 is good and a queen is good. Uh, we decide to check fold, uh, which I think is correct. Like, there are some people that would go like, hey, I have an open ender because, you know, both make me a straight and if I hit my queen, I probably have a better straight than someone with a with an 8, right? And that's true, but then th the queen shouldn't be hard um, and we have a runner runner, so there are some people that bet is, I think, check fold, playing on the safe side. Um, is better in the long run. Um, so that's that one. Then we jump to 12. Wait, that can be oh, 11 first, apparently. Uh, with the pocket 5s, okay, this hand. So we open, we get a small from small blind, a call from a small blind, and we flop the nuts. Like, just flop the nuts. And you decide to check it. So it checks to us and we check it. Like, why would you check here? Like, we're gonna see bet here with a huge huge amount of our range like any any pair we're gonna see bet here any decent days we're gonna see bet here and there's plenty of hands this guy floats with like if he has two overs he might float uh six seven he might float uh like if he has an eight it's gonna get all in anyway like there's no reason um to care about that hand but uh, i think there's plenty of hands to where he floats uh anyway we check behind okay Maybe, but I, I would just bet here because we're gonna bet with our bluffs anyway. Four of heart comes, uh, four brings in the straights. Um, it also gives a flash draw out there. Uh, doesn't actually do anything. Guy checks to us again. If you bet here, it's gonna look even more like a bluff. Like, I don't see why we don't bet here. Uh, you decide to check again just to make the guy improve his hand, which seems really weird. Um, like, sure. If he maybe hits something on the river, we can get it. But uh, I think we we're gonna see it here so often with the other part of our range, like to not not a range, that we want to make a see bit here just to uh, like a check here seems so weird. Just look at it from the other side, like this board and the guy checks behind twice. Mm, weird. Then the flush comes in, uh, guy checks to us again, and then we decide to overbet the pot, like. What are we trying to achieve here? Like make it look like a buff, like we're trying to buy the pot and just shove or something. Um or go like seventy and then draw some fish that do that with with not at ranges and then shove and then other people call because they're like, oh, no we can't have it. Uh like if he had a flush there he would let auto I think. Um and let's say he hit the flush, like if we bet on a turn and he had a flush there, would call there as well and then we can value bet here a bit bigger or get more from him um like i would bet on a turn here i don't think this hand is, is well played looking into look into it uh look into other lines uh maybe post it on reddit or something or another forum and ask how others would play it but i don't like the the, the double check with uh basically nuts like we want to get value out of it uh, and we don't um and the next hand i'm going to show is actually an example where uh directly related to it so we open from the bottom with King Six. So we don't think this is fine. This is a nice deal. Uh, we get a call from a small blind, and from the big blind, and then this board comes, right? Right. So this is a similar board. It's it's paired. Um, they're they're somewhat connected, um, and it even has suited. So we're gonna get way more floats than with the previous hand. Like imagine if this is eight eight seven and we have sevens. Um, are you still gonna check behind just to hope someone else improves? No, right? You're gonna bet because people are gonna continue with their draws. They're not gonna give up their draws here. But here we have a king, it's in our bluff range, and you actually check what the guy had in the ace nine. Okay, we wouldn't have gotten value out of that, but so be it. Um So we continue here and then all of a sudden they they both fall of course but i mean if you continue here with a bluff why wouldn't we continue with the nuts as well like people aren't always going to believe you just bet for value uh and if if they fall they fall like they wouldn't have had anything anyway on the turn like what if the turn comes an ace um sure he might call them but he's not going to pay two streets all the time like i, I don't know um and then here, the very next hand, we have at 13-13. Uh, this ace-queen was fine. But oh, this is uh, that hand. Uh, so we have the ace-queen. Um, we get two calls. And it's not it's not badly played. You, you, um, 
this guy dunks into us and he falls, but you mentioned that, huh? I was too busy with uh, checking the other guy that I think we missed a C, but no, that's not true. This guy just dunks into us. Um, this is either a really weak hand or really good hand. I don't think we have a hand to call him with. Um, if this was a normal table cash game, I, I might call just to see what it does on the turn to gain some information about it. Uh, but for now, like it's not just not worth it. Just fold this. Like uh, we shouldn't be leveling uh, at any point. And then 1330, we have jacks here to the left. Um, we we'll get a call, and the flop comes king high. Um, we decide to see bet, which I think is fine, but uh, I think our see bet should be a bit higher. Uh, we go half pot, so just make it 25 or something. And the guy mean raises us. Um, you talk about this and find this a bit shady, um, or at least you put him on a flash draw. I'm like, yeah, I have flash draw as well. Uh, I put him on a flash draw as well. Um, like his mean raise makes no sense after a call to us. Like, what can he have? Like king queen? Why is he raising king queen? He should flat king queen. Uh, like deuces and fives are the only thing that makes sense. That wants to charge draws, but why the min race? Um, we're out of position though, and you actually don't think, uh, or I don't think you do. You don't think about the continuation of this hand when you make your decision. Um, so you're thinking about your decision right now, and you're like, "Oh, I think he has a flash draw," and we call. And that's it. That's that's the only thing you say about it. Like, think for. What if we call and a blank comes on the turn? What do we do then? Do we lead out? Do we do we lead out another time and, and get him off his flash draw? Saying like, hey man, if you have a flash draw, you better fold it now. Do we um, do we uh, just check call? Do we check fold? Do we check hope he checks behind with a flash draw and doesn't get there? And then we can check call on the river. Like think about that before you actually make the call. Um, we decide to call and then uh, check fall to his half pot uh, on the turn, which is a blank by the way, it's uh, 8 of clubs. Um, if you want to see it play out, you, you can see it play out. We make the call. Um, I think the call is fine, but I think if a blank comes on the turn, we should lead out then. Um, because if we call and put him on a flash draw, um, we can lead out here for like 75 and get him out of it. Um, but think about that uh, in, in the in the hand a bit more. Um, also, you can consider 3-betting, three 3-bet three bluffing uh, him there. Uh, the problem is that your 3-bet bluff has to be higher than your 75 cents here on the blank. So I think um, calling and then um, when a blank comes, leading out for 75 is a decent kind of bluff. Um, sure, he's gonna continue with like deuces, fives and maybe king-queen. Um, but there's plenty of hands he's gonna fold there. Uh, if he shoves on us, we still uh, have fold equity, of course, and we're gonna. Oh, uh, we're still gonna fold, of course. Um, we decide to shake fold, okay. But I think if we decide to shake fold on a blank on the turn, uh, we should just fold it on on the flop. Um, and then at 16, there's it's just a bunch of dead hands um, for the rest. So uh, that's not it. Come on, where is it? Oh yeah, the A3 suited. So, A3 suited on the button is a fine hand. Uh, it doesn't really fall around to us. We get a limper, um, and we raise it. Like this, this is still like we can never believe that A3 is even ahead of this guy's range because a limp sure it could be suited connectors, but it's usually like a pocket pair, like fours or something, and then he's ahead of our range. Um, this guy calls. Oh, this guy actually min raises us. Um, and just because we have limper in front of us, our race should be pretty uh, narrow. Like we have a decent uh, range here with our race, um, and his min race uh, is not at like to me. It looks like aces and kings, um, because if you have queens, you you actually race higher here, right? You go like 65 or something, maybe 70 even. Um, that's what I would do. With queens, like ace king, uh, might just flat or might three bet, but again, it's gonna three bet higher. Like, a mean race makes no sense here. Um, but we're obviously priced in, I guess. Um, the guy wants a call, so that's why I put him on another range, like aces and kings. Um, that's my, my first idea when, when I saw him do this. Like, this can never be a steal, right? Like, how on earth would he, would he be stealing here? Um, I'd be willing to fold this, but I think call is fine. Uh, we do have a suited ace.
And yeah, after some talk, um, you're basically wondering what this range could be. Uh, we flop the non flush draw. And the guy checks to us, and this is really weird, right? He mean raises pre, and then he checks to us. And at this point, I thought, like, this guy has kings, like, he's just waiting to check raise or something. It makes, like, no sense for him to. It makes, like, no sense for him to, to check here after he was a pre flop aggressor. Um. No, because let's look at if, if he has aces, he doesn't have a blocker, he wants to charge you for a flush draw. Um, so we should bet this, like, what is he, What is this guy scared of? Kings, it checks, force, like, like how unlikely is that? Um, maybe king jack, but even then, that's unlikely, you probably have like one pair and a decent kicker. Uh, he wants to make you pay with aces, so we should lead out again. Um, I think a check here is pretty... It's like a kings to me uh, with a preflop uh, play and display here. Um, it, it looks like a set of kings to me. Um, so it checks to us, and, and given the, the thing I have here, we get it for free. Uh, I would check behind. Um, I don't really dislike your idea of betting here. I think that's a standard play that people would do. Um, and you make it a bit bit bigger. Um, seems fine. We we're, we're basically repping the king here. Um, the guy thinks about it for a while and then calls. Um, now his pause, I don't think he's actually thinking about uh, falling here. I think he's thinking about calling or raising. Uh, like is he really that scared of the flesh draw? And he decides to just call. And then Deuce comes and he checks again to us. Um, like how shady is this? Like wh what on earth is this guy doing? Wh what does he have here? How does this even make any sense? Um, so, yeah, I put him on kings, uh, that's the hand I have him on. Um, you check behind, obvious check behind, of course, our hand increases in deck T, but we need to improve. Um, I think the standard line people would do here is, hey, our hand increases in equity, we now have 12 outs. Uh, we can bet here, but then the guy, like, check raises you in, in an awful position. Um, with the read I have, like, he has kings and aces, or the hand I put him on, like, kings and aces. Um... Like, I think the um, we need to improve, and when we improve, like, if a 5 comes, we're definitely getting a big amount of money. Um, if, like, a spade comes, we get some value. Um, I think getting it for free is fine. Like, there's no reason to bet here. Um, we miss and we check fault. Um, like, I think your line is, is, is standard there. Um, but given the way he played, like, pre-flop, I already give him another range, and then the check on the flop makes no sense. I, I think I would check behind. Um, just to see if I can get there for free. Um, plus, if we check behind and he bets then 50 or something on the turn, we're gonna call the 50 uh, because we have improved there and we still have the not flush draw. Uh, and we end up with the same situation anyway. Uh, but you just have one less street that we have to be scared of. Uh, so I think check on the flop is better and then uh, check and then just call his lead on the turn uh, or something. Uh, but that's basically the, the read I put him on. Uh, basically not it. Uh, kings. Oh yeah, this hand. Um, the hand is well played, like we get ace-jack under the gun, we open 3x, uh, we get two colors. Um, we flopped up two, like this is the ace-3 hand. Um, we flopped up two and get checked to us. And we decide to see bet like this is an obvious c bet spot. Um, c bet higher, okay? Uh, your c bet here should be at least 30, probably 35. It's a really draw heavy board against two people. Um, like jack 9 connects with a lot of hands. 10-8, uh, 10 queen, um, a 10 even makes a straight for people um, with king queen. Um, like it's it's just, there's also a flesh draw out there. Um, make him pay for it. Like 35 should be your c bet here. Um, a 40 is obviously a bit too high, but I think 35 for sure. Um, like half pot is way too low, uh, especially against two people. Um, you don't want to give him the draw that free. Uh, so obviously C bit here, but but C bit higher, C bit way higher. Uh, we get called by by both, uh, and of course the flesh comes in. Uh, you mentioned being scared of that card. I would be too, uh, especially given the flop, uh, and and both calling of course. Uh, checks to us again, which seems pretty weird. Um, now, 
there are different lines of plays here. You can play scared of the of the flush, but then um, if a blank comes, you have to call the river bet. Like if you check here, um, they're gonna bluff at this often enough, or one of the two is gonna bluff at this often enough, and you have to be willing to call the river bet. Like if a if a stupid deuce comes and then uh, the first guy checks and the second guy leads out for like 75, you have to call that. Like because you check behind on the turn, they know you're scared of the flush and they can rep that, try to bluff you of it, you have to call it then. Um, we decide to see bet, oh, we decide to bet again, like double barrel, um, basically with still a nuts hand. Um, I think that's fine, I think that's good. Um, like both lines make sense. Um, the problem now is though, um, that if we do get called and he down leads out on the river, we have to fold. Um, if it's a blank, that is. Um, and then think about that before you make the bet. Like, this is a lesson I want to give you in this video. Before you make your bet, think about which card can come on the next street and what's the situation at that point and what do I do if X happens. And that's something you learn, of course, by, by doing so, but you gotta remember that if you bet out here and the guy um, and one of the two calls, which is likely, if they lead out on the river, what are you gonna do then? Like, you, you have to up to on a pretty heavy board at this point. Like, what do you do? Um, and then the same is true, like, if you check behind and they then lead out, like, we have to call. Of course, if he leads out and he calls, we can still find a fault. Or if he leads out and he raises, we're definitely folding. Um, but those are narrow situations, but I think if... if like we don't see bet and and he leads out and he falls or he checks and he fo he leads out we we just call. Um, you played it differently though. I think it's fine to um, bet here. Uh, Seventy is fine. Um, like some king of clubs are, are gonna call as well here. Like king jack with with the king of clubs are gonna call. Um, and then of course, as I said, if now this guy should lead, if this was a blank, uh, we fold, or each jack even. But of course, a jack comes, we have the nuts, uh, get checked to us, we're never checking behind here, <laughs> like, let's let's face it. Uh, I think your bet size is fine here, like almost pot, um, is pretty good. Uh, the guy shoves on us, and we obviously snap, snap call, uh, and he had a flush, 97. And then the last hand with the 220. Oh, the king queen, I think. Uh, so we have a limper in front of us. Um, we raise. Is is really this ha this hand? And he limps again, right? Uh, no. What am I talking about? And 22, 20. Is it the ace 10? Oh yeah, the ace 10. Uh, it's a very similar hand to one of the previous ones. Uh, basically, a pretty coordinated board uh, hitting his range more often than not. We're, um, it sh gets checked to us. We're gonna get check raised here way too often. Um, we don't have any redraw, like if we get check raised we're gonna fold. Uh, like if we bet here and he calls, what, it, what do we do on a blank turn? Do we just bet it again? A 10 might be um, tainted, like 9-7 is there. Um, so that's about it. Um, give me a second, got a phone call. Uh, but that's about it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for the next one.